We welcome into the Media Center uh, Ryan Newman, uh, driver of the number 39 Haas Automation Chevrolet. Ryan, talk a little bit about coming into Talladega, seventh in points and just finishing up your first practice session. How much do you want me to talk? However much you want to talk. <laughs> I, um, you know, we've, we've started off the season way better than we have the last two years, and um, the guys have done a really good job in the shop. And, and um, you know, we've, we've had good performances on the racetrack and at the same time been able to put those together when the checkered flag drops. So um, just really proud of the situation that we're in and, uh, you know, the hard work that's gone into it, obviously. But, uh, you know, overall, coming into Talladega, just, uh, you know, wanting to, wanting to know if uh, when the dice get rolled they're going to, if they're going to play to our favor or not. So, um, you know, overall, just uh, riding the wave, kind of. Okay, we'll open it up for questions. Uh, raise your hand. We'll get a wireless mic to you and make sure you state your name and affiliation. We'll start right here with Jeff. Uh, Ryan, you've obviously had some bad experiences here with crashes and stuff, and you've made no secret in the past that you don't really love this kind of racing. What, what kind of attitude do you have when you come here? Do you just sort of hope you can avoid the crash or do you who doesn't here? is that kind <laughs> who of who doesn't mind? hope they can avoid the crash i mean i'm just like everybody else um you know when you're up front it's great when you're not it's you know it can be miserable and uh when you, you're the recipient of somebody else's you know lack of judgment then it it's not easy to talk about it and that's pretty much it i mean it's just there's way more potential for that here than there is most other racetracks so um you know that's yeah, I'm no different than anybody else. I'd love to win the race, but you know, when I when I am the recipient of somebody's misjudgment, that's even more aggravating. Do you kind of dread coming here because of the bad things that's happened to you? I don't say I dread it. It's not my favorite racetrack, but I don't say I dread it. I mean, I still love what I do. Still had fun in practice. Um, you know, I I'm good. Questions for Ryan? Please raise your hand. We'll get a wireless mic to you. Don Cobble with Morris News Service. Um, what do you do when you see the weather? I mean, we did this last year, if I'm not mistaken, didn't yeah. we? Yeah. Do you have a uh, emergency plan on what bed to duck under and well, all I've, this? Of all the um, times I've watched Weather Channel with uh, tornadoes and whatnot, they've never reported a uh, a bus lot of 43. Uh, you know, expensive, heavy buses getting destroyed. So I'm going to stick with the odds and stay in the bus and uh, go from there. I don't. I mean, I don't. I don't know that we're going to get the weather that they thought we were potentially going to get. But I don't think it has. I think it has potential to be pretty bad if it does get down here. So uh, I think we're going to catch the tail end of of uh, you know what, what's coming our way. But who knows what that tail end is going to have to offer. Well, uh, yeah, but see that it all depends on where your bus is parked. I and mean, our buses are spread out a little bit more here than they are at most places. But I mean, it's we'll, we'll make it. We'll be fine. Questions for Ryan? Please raise your hand. We'll get a wireless mic to you. Anybody else? Questions for Claire? Hold one second, Claire. We'll get a mic to you. Claire B. Lang, Sirius NASCAR Radio. Um, talk about how you prefer it. Why, why are you telling me what to talk about? <laughs> Just ask a question. The question is, uh, the communication you have in your car, how many radios and uh, the exact uh, way that you're going to connect onto the radio, gloves on, two radios, one, feeling as you change channels. Uh, you guys got that all set up and how? Now talk. You said it. Honestly, you said it. I mean, it, gloves are going to stay on. Um, two radios, uh, one's my primary, another one has options. And um, honestly, we set up the same scenario here as we had at Daytona, and I never use it at Daytona. Not one single time did I ever use that second radio. So I think it all depends on the situations that you're in and, um, you know, I'd, and how lucky you get, I mean, honestly. So the second radio is just your backup and then the primary just your teammate? It's my, it's my all options radio. It has me on it, but it also has other people. Okay, and you only flip over there if you need it. Exactly. Thank you. Otherwise, I can't talk to my crew chief. Any other questions for Ryan? All right, Marty. Marty Smith, ESPN. Ryan, I don't know 
any specific time when this may have happened to you, but I presume as a competitor it has, when you feel like you gave one away. If that happens, what does, does it take to let it go? What, does it, what has to happen in order for you to forget? Well, first thing that came to my mind was Martinsville, but the, the, the complexity of it is the you part. You as a driver, you as a team. Um, for me, uh, you know, I, th I thought that Martinsville was a race that we had a high potential to win, and uh, we had a part break on the race car. So, did I screw it up? I don't think so. Did it? You know, was it somebody's fault? I don't. I don't think we ever put blame on anybody. But you know, we we reestablished some of our parameters of the race car so that it won't happen again. Um, so, uh, is there times? Yes, that I that I've given one up. You know, go back to Star Charlotte and. 2001 when I was leading and crashed a car at uh, you know in the middle of three and four yeah I felt like I gave one away there because we had a really really fast race car that's not to say we weren't going to blow a tire two laps later catching a, 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 a 1032 bolt going into turn one you just I mean yeah I have felt that <laughs> any other questions for Jeff we'll get a mic to you it, Ryan, is this race, racing here, is this more mentally challenging with all the things you have to deal with, with the two-car draft and the radio communication, putting yourself in the right position? It seems like there's a lot to deal with inside the race car. Is it more mentally difficult than other races? It's more mentally and, emo and therefore emotionally challenging than other races. I mean, when I got out of the race car at Texas, I was a whip puppy, and I think a lot of guys were, so it was way more physically demanding than I thought it was going to be. Um, and... and you know, every every race is mentally demanding, but this is you know here in Daytona, pretty much top it. I mean, and, and there's there's places like the road courses where they're mentally challenging because it takes a lot of discipline uh, on the physical part, but um, um, that discipline is on the mental part too. Like you mentally can put yourself in a physically bad position, is what I'm getting at in those road courses. So, um, yes, I was going to just say yes, but I didn't want you to think I was being rude. <laughs> Any more questions for Ryan? Ryan, thank you very much for your time. Thank Good you. luck this weekend. Thank you.